Welcome. In this video, we will be discussing the Recruitment Manager Excel template. I'm going to answer some of the frequently asked questions related to this template. And in this video, we will see the most frequently asked question. And then in the following video, we will see some more questions that are often asked about the Recruitment Manager Excel template. The most frequently asked question we have about this template is, why does the dashboard not reflect the data entered? Or why does the dashboard not show anything? Why is the dashboard blank? Essentially, all these questions are related to why does the dashboard not reflect what I have already entered in the jobs and application sheet? And to recap, the Recruitment Manager Excel template allows you to track the job postings and the applications that you have received for those jobs and then it automatically calculates this dashboard with relevant metrics about your hiring process and if this dashboard does not update then obviously we have a problem so in this video i will go through each of these scenarios which will be explaining why the dashboard did not reflect the data you entered and then you can correct the errors, whether it's a data entry error or missing information or the invalid format, whatever it is, you, once you fix them and then when you refresh the data, then you will have the dashboard correctly reflecting the data you have entered. I also want to let you know that in the next version of this template, we will incorporate more appropriate error messages that will inform the users clearly what is the data entry error. So now before we start, I just wanted to remind that there are two useful articles that would be very relevant. If you have not had a chance to see them, please read them. So the first one is about the usage of Excel templates and five quick tips. Um, and then the second one is how to enter and delete data in Excel tables. So we use Excel tables as the primary method of data input in our template. So getting familiar with how to enter and remove data from Excel tables would be uh, very, very critical to using our templates. Okay, so now let's get started with the various reasons why the dashboard could not be reflecting the data you have entered. This is our Excel template, and this is the dashboard sheet, which we will be looking a lot more in this video. So the first reason we're gonna talk about is data not being refreshed. So whenever we have entered any new data or edited any existing data, then we have to refresh the calculations. So you go to the data ribbon and hit refresh all. If we don't do that, then the calculations will still be reflecting older data. And so this is the first thing to check for. Have you refreshed um, the calculation, so this would update all the metrics um, automatically. So check whether you have refreshed the data. The second reason why the dashboard may not reflect correctly is if you have any data entry errors. So in the application sheet, you can actually see if there is a data entry error in column Q that reflects this column reflects the error if there are any. And in this case, we have some errors and that's why they show. Um, you, uh, uh, these are all calculated columns on the right. And the way I have it set up so that I have frozen the panes here. So just to show how I did that, let's go back here. Okay, this is how they usually are. So what I have done is to click this column and then I've done freeze panes. This allows me to view the error um, um, record or error column next to the application data so we can see why there is an error. So let me illustrate um, why these errors are happening. So the first reason why the errors may happen is if you have missing dates. So in this case, this is a, uh, an application that is hired and the offer date is missing even though the hire date is present and the on-site interview date is present. So the, in these scenarios, in hired applications, we expect all the dates to be populated. Uh, if the hire stage is the sixth stage, then all the dates are required. If the hire, hire stage is fifth, in your scenario, you may only have five stages. And in that case, then we would need all the five stages. So essentially, you cannot have a missing stage 
for um, hired um, applications. The second application is an illustration of another reason why you may have an error. In this case, you can see that all the dates are populated, so why should there be an error? Um, that's because the dates are not chronological. So the phone screen happened 24th Feb, but then the manager interview happened 22nd Feb. That cannot happen. We expect these things to be chronological. So the, um, the application date should be greater or equal to job posted date. Um, so the job posted date is can be seen in column Y and the job posted date is the beginning of the process, right? So the job posted date um, should be less than or equal to the application date and the application date should be less than or equal to phone screen date and so on until the higher date. So they should be chronological. In this case, it is not and that is why we have that specific error message up here. Okay, now the third case is without any errors because all the dates are populated and they're all in sequence, so no error. If there is no error, that application will be reflected in the dashboard. And if there is a, an error, then they won't be included in the calculations. The next, um, so this is for hired application. So we can't expect if um, a, a non-hired application to also have all the dates populated. That doesn't make sense because you didn't uh, hire them. So why would there be an offer date or hire date if you if they don't even go to that state those stages? So for not hired applications um, or if the application status is blank, which means you're still deciding on whether you want to hire that person or not. In those two scenarios, not hired and blank status, meaning not decided yet. In those two scenarios, we would still expect the dates to be not missing in between stages. For example, application is present, manager interview date is present, but the phone screen is not. That cannot happen. We always need to have in between stages uh, populated. So you cannot have first stage and the third stage, but then missing second stage. You cannot have the uh, first three and the fifth, but then not the fourth. So you just cannot be uh, missing data. And this is the re um, this will impact our calculations on time taken in each state. That's the reason why we cannot have blanks in between. So th there could be a scenario where you may say, hey, this is an applicant who is internal and I didn't um, have to do a phone screen. They directly go to the next stage of manager interview. And that's the reason why there is no date. Okay, that's a valid case. Um, however, my suggestion in that case would be just enter the application date again as the phone screen date. So if I do something like that, then the error goes away. And you can also see that the, um, the phone screen time will be calculated as zero days, meaning from application, it took zero days to complete the phone screen. From there, it took 12 days to complete the manager interview. So basically you are um, still accounting for the phone screen date, but it will be counted as it took zero days because you didn't actually do a phone screening. Um, so that is what I would recommend. So please don't enter any blanks. Please enter the previous stage date again if the stage is missed, okay? So the next um, is in this case, not hired, but the dates are not chronological. So the phone screen happened 4th May, the manager interview happened 25th April, that cannot happen. You need to fix the dates correctly so that they are in sequence. This is an example of where there is no error because the dates are present, no missing dates in between, and they're all um, chronological. Okay, so the not decided applications, it follows the same scenario. You cannot have a missing date in between. You cannot have 13th Jan and then 12th Jan phone screen. That is not chronological. Uh, and then this is an example of where everything is chronological without any errors. So this was our um, second reason or the scenario where there could be errors in data entry in the applications and job sheets. The third scenario is you may have some required fields 
not populated or not entered. So in the job sheet, let's go back to the job sheet, the job ID is a required field and these three columns are also required. Job poster date is very important. This allows us to calculate how long it took to cal uh, hire the pers hire the for each position. This is a numeric field, so please enter numbers because this reflects how many positions are open for this job. So geological engineer, there is only one position open and then uh, programmer three, there are two jobs or two positions open for that job. Um, so this has to be entered and this has to be a numeric value. This um, status should be always populated. It, it can either be an open job, which means you're still hiring for, uh, completed, which means you have already hired the person or people and the job can be completed. And then cancelled is if you decided not to continue hiring and you cancelled it. Every job has to be in one of these positions or one of these status. So these are required fields. If you are if you have not entered those, then that could be uh, reflecting in the dashboard. The application sheet, there are a few required fields. So you have to enter a job ID, candidate name, you have to enter the um, application source and the application date um, because every application should at least have an application date. It may not have all these dates, but at least uh, the application date should be present. The next reason is the dates could be in invalid format. Um, so here are the dates and uh, this is a somewhat tricky one because Excel displays the dates and uses the dates in a slightly different way in some languages and some regional installations of Excel. Um, so I am currently using the US version um, or region. And um, so yours may look a little bit different. So please uh, uh, let me know if you have specific questions about your specific installation of Excel. Um, in general, if, there, if um, the, these entries are supposed to be dates, and so if they're not dates, then we have a problem with our calculations. So you can check whether any entry you have is a date or is Excel treating that as a date or not by going to this number format drop down and then see, for example, this shows up as dates. You can see uh, if Excel is understanding correctly, then it'll say Thursday, June 2nd, 2016, because that's the data that's the data I've entered. Uh, but let's say I enter something different, which is 6th June um, 16. Um, so this is not a valid um, data uh, format for date format. And then Excel will actually treat that as a text. How do you know it's treating as text? Because everything will say 6th June 16, because Excel does not um, recognize that it's a number, it's a text string and so if you see this in your entry then that means we have um, you need to correct the date format so we go back and then enter and then now you will see that um, it is reflecting sorry second june 2nd so if you see the dates appear correctly in the number format then you have entered in the correct format okay now, the next reason would be if you have applied some filters in the dashboard. So for example, if I have, um, let me show the filters. So here are the um, filters or the slicers that you can use. So let's say I have filtered on HR department and all the metrics you saw that are reflected only HR. And if you have done this and then you probably forgot that you did this then the numbers will not be reflecting what you expect and so maybe check whether you have applied any filters if you have clear them so that you can see all the applications being evaluated the next thing is there are um, let's say you have entered a job and i think i've entered uh, job number 33 here which does not have any data in the application sheet, which means I've created a job, but I have not entered any applications. In that scenario, um, you, okay, how do I know that I have not entered? So you can see the number of apps column. Again, this is a calculation, so don't edit it, but number of applications shows zero. Um, that means there is no applications 
um, in the application sheet for that job. You can filter, so go back here. Let's say this is the better way to do it. Identify if there are any which are missing applications. And this is one job where there is no applications. So what I'm going to do is to go to the application sheet uh, and then you will not find the job ID 33 here because um, we don't have any entry for that job ID 32 and then it goes to 34. Okay, now if you have such things, then the dashboard open positions may not in or will not include that specific job because um, there is nothing in the application sheet and the entire dashboard is driven off of the application sheet. But you will still see here in the top right three open positions without applications, which means we don't have any applications data for so many days. Um, and so if I go back here, you will see that this job has three positions and that is what is reflected here. If you have many more jobs, then we will total everything and show correctly how many open positions are there without applications. So in order to know truly how many open positions, you have to take this and then add this and that is the true um, number of open positions. So now for the last reason, no hired or relevant applications in the data. The dashboard has many sections here. You can see that there are uh, these four metrics at the top. There are open position metrics here, and then recruitment funnel, monthly metrics, and all these. All of these uh, require certain relevant data in order to calculate the metric, which would be meaningful. For example, hired apps per hire, days to hire, cost per hire. All of these would need to have at least one hired application in the data so that these metrics can be calculated meaningfully. And that's why they will not appear um, un until there is a hired application. So a hired application means the application status should be hired. If you have entered all the data, but you haven't hired anybody, then in the dashboard, please don't expect anything to be populated at the top because there's nothing that can be populated meaningfully. Um, the open positions may still be populated if you have open positions. Now, the recruitment funnel will appear if there are um, applications which are hired or not hired. So regardless, we have made a decision, so then um, that will come through to the recruitment funnel. Um, the monthly metrics will only populate if you have hired applications because these are hiring related metrics. Um, pipeline efficiency of hiring will also populate only if there are hired application, otherwise it will not. Um, application sources will also populate only if there are hired applications. Decline reasons um, are driven by not hired applications. So if you have applications which are not hired and then you put a decline reason, then it'll come through here. Um, and if you if you haven't entered the decline reasons, then you don't. These will not be populated. Active pipeline is driven based on applications which have no status, which means we have not taken a decision on them yet. So all these applications which have blank or no status, that will be reflected in the active pipeline. Cost is the total of the cost which you have entered in the jobs sheet. So let me show all the columns. So this is the cost column. So all the cost entries we have entered here will be uh, reflected here. So if you have not entered any cost there, then nothing will happen here. So these are um, some things to keep in mind. Each section of the dashboard requires certain relevant data to create the metrics that will be meaningful. And so please check whether your data has those relevant um, applications and um, if you have, then those sections will be populated accordingly. In a future video, we will cover some of the other questions that are frequently asked about the Recruitment Manager template. Um, if you like the video, please do like and share with your friends. If you have any questions about this template at all, please post them in the comments and um, please subscribe to the channel to receive notifications of future videos. Thank you so much for watching this video.